Welcome back, Seth Bling here. And today I want to show you my personal best speedrun for Super Mario Land. It is, of course, the game in front of your eyes. Uh, Super Mario Land is the first Mario game for the Game Boy, so it's the first mobile Mario game. Uh, I'm playing it on a Super Game Boy, plugged into my Super Nintendo, and that's why there is color, because uh, that can add adds a color palette to the game. Um, this game is a little bit different than a lot of other Mario games. This was not actually made by Shigeru Miyamoto and team. Uh, this, this was made by a different team, and so it has some quirks for sure. The physics engine is a little bit different, and uh, <laughs> yeah, th there's like Goombas and there's Koopas, although the Koopas explode when you bounce on them uh, after a short cooldown. Uh, there's Piranha Plants, and then there's a lot of other enemies that aren't really in any other Mario games, are pretty much just unique to this game. Um, this was the last game that I needed to learn for the Mario Credits Hour challenge that I want to do, which is to speedrun eight games in under an hour, including Credits Warps, uh, but I'm going to get to that a little bit later. So let me talk a little bit about some of the quirkiness of the physics engines. There's like three big de like kind of departures from the way things normally work. You'll notice that when I fall off a ledge, or a pipe, or any platform, or anything, I will immediately have maximum negative velocity. Uh, you'll see it here. Just sort of like snap right down onto the next uh, surface. Um, it's immediately apparent when you like run down a uh, like stairs like that. It behaves very differently. Uh, there's some other things like if you're running to the right and you like bump into a wall as you like you jump and you bump into a wall. You'll actually keep some of your horizontal velocity even after you clear the wall. So in any other Mario game, you your horizontal velocity would just get stopped and you would have to rebuild up all of that velocity. In this game, you actually keep some of it and it takes some getting used to, but I actually think I kind of like it. It means if you're like jumping and you would tend to, you know, jump over a pipe, but you kind of bump up against the pipe, you still like keep some of that velocity that you kind of expect to have as you go over the pipe. So I, I think it's it's kind of an interesting change. It definitely takes some getting used to. Oh, this is the bonus game. This happens at the end of each world. There are four worlds in this game, and each world has only three levels. So it's a pretty short game, only 12 levels. Uh, but there aren't any warp pipes or warp zones or anything like that, any way to skip levels. There's no known credits warp or anything. So this game is just, you just got to play it legit pretty much. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah, there's one other thing, which is pretty big, which is that Mario accelerates. If he's on the ground, he'll accelerate to his full speed almost immediately. And <laughs> actually that one is can get you killed really fast. Uh, but it does mean that from even a tiny platform, you can accelerate to full speed and make a, a large jump. So it's like kind of nice, but also you can just zoom right off the edge of a, a cliff very easily. Um, so those are the main, main physics differences and, and they definitely have an impact on the speed run. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, a game without any warps or anything, and where you're mostly just platforming, any changes to the phys physics engine are going to be important. Uh, I'm using, I wouldn't say like the fastest strats. <laughs> the world record for this game is 12 minutes and 25 seconds. My PB here is 13 minutes 48 seconds. So I'm like a minute and a half off a world record. It's it's pretty far. Uh, I'm about a third of the way up or down the. The, the list in terms of time. So I my I think uh, third number 35 on the leaderboard out of about 111. So about I'm in the top third, roughly. Uh, there's two auto scrollers in this game. One's underwater and one's in the air, but they really both use the same physics of you can fly around in this submarine slash airplane and you shoot up to three bullets at a time on screen at a time. This one is very easy. <laughs> Uh, you can just kind of sit in one or two places and just shoot, and you don't have to do very much. Uh, the, the, uh, the other auto-scroller is the very last level of the game, where you fight the boss of the game, which is an alien known as Tatanga, who makes an appearance also in Super Mario Land 2. Um, but, uh, yeah, this level, this level not too tricky. <laughs> um, so uh, there's going to be another bonus level at the end of this one because at the end again at the end of every world this is the last level in world two. Oh my cat Miko is is meowing. Anyway, <laughs> there is gonna be a bonus level. In the in the last world at the bonus level I got a, a super ball flower, 
or super flower maybe it it is I don't remember exactly what it's called it's uh it's not quite the same as a, a fire flower um, it shoots super balls which are like they're like fireballs except they don't have any gravity and they bounce around like crazy and you can only have one of them on screen at a time so I actually have this power up and and in this level since I'm in the submarine it doesn't matter in other levels I can shoot the super ball but because the super ball bounces around so crazy it's like very very hard to take advantage of that um, <laughs> so I only shoot two super balls in this speed run and you won't even really see them because they'll immediately hit enemies so you won't get to see them bouncing around like crazy I believe the super ball is a power up like a custom power up or a special power up in Mario Maker I got three one-ups here which is kind of bad bad luck I guess because uh, it just takes longer the animation to get the three power or the three uh three one-ups a three up uh, so I've at this point, I've finished half the levels. Uh, the first six levels are probably the easiest six levels in the run, so it does start to get harder at this point. Uh, that was a little bit of a misstep. Didn't mean to fall down there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so it does. The ramp, difficulty definitely ramps up. You can see I'm, I'm having to dodge a lot more enemies and stuff. But overall, I've come up with a pretty safe set of strategies because I want to use this. Right, this is this this game is part of the Mario Credits Hour that I plan on doing. So once again, I've talked about this in a lot of my previous videos recently, a lot of my other speedruns, that I want to do a medley of eight games uh, in under an hour. Eight Mario games. It's the first eight Mario games. Uh, this one will be the fourth one in the order because it's the fourth uh, released Mario game because I'm doing it in order of release date. And uh, yeah, so... I deliberately chose very like safe strats, things I think I'm minimally likely to fail at or lose time at or major chunks of time, things like game overing or dying. Uh, this level is pretty tough too. There's like the spiders coming down from above um, give you just like constrain where you can jump quite a lot and there's no, it's like pretty hard to jump on top of them. Here I actually do jump on top of one so you can do it but since they come from above, it's usually very hard to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, th there's not too much to talk about just because this game is just all about the platforming. Uh, it it's it's like very interesting. Like it's tricky to to try and do a lot of these maneuvers because of, for instance, how fast Mario accelerates. I I like to say that he has rocket rocket boots on in this game. That just <laughs> it, it's just seriously within a frame or two. I don't know the exact number of frames, but maybe it's three frames. I don't know. Very quickly, he gets to full speed. You can see I right there, I just like got to full speed immediately. You can see it on all these platforms, essentially. I'm doing full speed jumps from almost... It looks like I'm doing it from a standstill, but I'm not. It takes a lot of getting used to. <laughs> and it really messes with safe strats, too. Just any platform you can fall off by just accidentally running over the edge. Pretty much. So this is 3-3. Three, three. Uh, this is another boss level. I think this is actually one of the easier levels uh, in the second half of the run. Um, there's just not a lot of enemies, so you... There's just like... It's just a lot of like jumping on platforms, pretty much. Um, yeah, again, you just kind of go over the top. <laughs> All the bosses in this game are pretty easy. The exception is uh, at the end... Tatanga is actually not that easy. I mean... If you're trying to, so Satanga, you'll see, but you, you have to shoot him from an airplane. And like, if you're trying to shoot him from far away, you, you need a lot of hits to kill him and you have to dodge a lot of stuff. But you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But if you're willing to just dive in and spam airplane shots at him, it's it's not too bad. But all the other bosses are, are quite easy. So here I got a Super Ball, Super Flower again. Uh, I d will be using it here to kill this enemy and this enemy. So you saw them very briefly. And that's all the Super Balls you're going to see. Um, you can use them a lot more times in this level. Uh, but I just have found that I am much more likely to die if I try and get fancy. Uh, it's very easy to miss with Super Balls because of how they bounce. So like here, you could clear out some, some of these Piranha Plants with Super Balls. I love how the Piranha Plants are like offset. <laughs> They're on the right half of the, the pipe. 
just because like they have to be aligned to a tile. This level is tough. This is probably the hardest level in the run. There's a lot of platforming, a lot of enemies. The bullets will get you, like they follow you. Uh, it took me quite a while to come up with a strategy that was relatively safe, and even then it's still not very safe, but I was able to pull it off in this run, so pretty good. Uh, the next level also a little bit tricky. I will actually get a star to uh, help my help get through the second half of the level. It's interesting, kind of Chinese themed or something. <laughs> it's a Japanese take on a Chinese theme. I don't think this type of level would make it into a <laughs> modern game necessarily. I don't know, maybe maybe it would. I guess Odyssey had some Mario Odyssey had some Chinese kind of themed parts. Maybe it was Japanese. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I take this part very safe. Uh, I mean, you can imagine it's it's possible to, to do a little bit faster than this. I was panicking there because I didn't quite do that the way I intended to. Interestingly, the, the music for the star in this game is obviously very different. <laughs> it's the can-can, <laughs> which is a little bit unexpected to a lot of people. But yeah, the star really helps getting through that part. And then the Super Bowl. Okay, I lied. There was a third Super Bowl. <laughs> You can actually, uh, even if you don't have Super Ball, you can just run through an enemy and take damage because there's a mushroom at the very beginning of the next level and having Super Ball in the next level doesn't matter because you're in an airplane and that is, for the rest of the game, Mario will be inside of an airplane having Super Ball versus Mushroom doesn't matter. But yeah, you can, their block on the top left right now has a mushroom in it, so it really doesn't matter. Um, this level, like, <laughs> yeah, the, the other auto-scroller is very easy. Uh, you just kind of can stay in one spot and shoot, and that's like all you have to do. They did a good job in this level of making the enemy AIs um, kind of more difficult and like responsive to where you are on screen. Uh, one really cool thing about this game is that there's essentially no RNG and no like frame rules. So enemies behave basically the exact exact same every time you encounter them. But in this level, like, the the planes that shoot bombs backwards will go up or down depending on where you are relative to them. And these birds will swoop out of their path, both depending on where you are vertically relative to them and also horizontally. So they'll try and hit you with their swoop, essentially. Um, and it's just, it's like, it does a pretty good job of making it hard to dodge them. Uh, and so I actually have sometimes uh, difficulty getting through this without taking damage. There are some safety mushrooms though, so it's not that biggest deal to take damage, but I think it's like, it's interesting how well they were able to design two enemies to like fill up the screen in this level and, uh, and make it difficult to just like sit in one spot and, and it's just idle there. This is sort of like the victory lap, uh, before <laughs> the final boss. Um, I like this game. I think this game is pretty fun. Uh, I know it looks a little bit janky, and it like will feel a little bit janky if you if you try it out. Uh, just the physics do feel a little bit janky, but it's actually once you get used to them, it's just different. It's not worse. It's just different, and I, I actually do think this is a pretty fun game overall. I gotta say, I really this is like my favorite enemy, the punching hand <laughs> coming down from the pipe. Just like a little bit different. So th this is the like mini boss before the final boss. Uh, I actually have lost some runs, some good runs to that cloud. And then here you just gotta dive in on Tatanga and just spam him. But uh, not too hard if you have a mushroom because you just take damage and it doesn't matter. One other nice thing about this game is when you get a power up or you hit, take a hit and lose the power up, the game doesn't freeze up like it does in every other Mario game, except for Super Mario Land 2 and I don't know, maybe 3. Uh, the game doesn't like freeze for a couple frames and so it doesn't screw with your sense of timing and stuff like that, which I really like. I think it's a, oh, Miko. <laughs> My cat was meowing again. I think that's a very positive thing. I think it's a good decision. Anyway, I think it's a fun game. Uh, I, like I said, I'm the next thing on my list is to try and complete all eight games now in order, in under an hour. So that's Super Mario uh, Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 1, the very original one. Super Mario Brothers 2 J, also known as The Lost Levels. Super Mario Brothers 2 U, formerly known as Doki Doki Panic. Uh, Super Mario Land, and then the four, those will be the four normal games, and then the four credits warps, Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, Super Mario World, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins, 
in Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. And it just so happens that if you play them in release order, it's the four non-Credits Warp games, followed by the four Credits Warps games. And that is the order that I'm going to do. Uh, release order. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to make a video soon talking about how that challenge will work, uh, what my personal bests are and how they sum up and how much room for error there is in executing them, uh, what the challenges are and, and all that sort of stuff, answering all sorts of questions, hopefully. <laughs> um, so look out for that soon. But uh, I'm very happy to have at least completed all eight games and have, you know, moderately decent speedrun times in each of them. Nothing, you know, nowhere near world record in most of them, but uh, I'm happy with that. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching.